Hello and welcome. In our previous tutorial, we were able to uh, look at the deployment requirements for the for the our Django website. And uh, in this uh, tutorial, we will be able to see uh, how to kind of separate the uh, the production and the development environment, or the local environment and the production uh, environments. And uh, one uh, way that I uh, did, uh, though there may be other better ways, is uh, uh, the creation of uh, uh, two environment uh, variable files. And we have the one that is for production and one that is for the development. And uh, we will begin with this, the one, uh, the one that is for uh, the development environment. And uh, we have our uh, some of the settings here uh, and one of them is the environment uh, variable which states that this is uh, specific, specific to the development and uh, we have the other one which uh, the same uh, debug for Django is uh, set to false so uh, the zero stands for false and uh, this is because in our local environment we do tests we are doing some tests uh, we keep on developing and testing so uh, we may need to see where the Maybe if we encounter any issues where they can they arise from, and then we have the secret key specific to the development environment, and we have these credentials for Postgres, and uh, the other uh, the corresponding uh, uh, Docker compose uh, YAML file is uh, Docker compose uh, dev uh, .yaml, uh, which we have uh, specified the environment uh, file points to the env uh, underscore dev. Uh, so this is a uh, kind of uh, settings that we have uh, uh, configured here. Then uh, let's look at uh, the, maybe the production environment, uh, environment variables, and I'll put it on side by side. So for the environment variable, we have uh, the debug is equals to zero. And I think I should set, or for the development environment, I should set it to true. And debug is equals to true, but for the production environment, it should stay as false. So I've just made some correction there. Uh, you can see we are using two different keys. So whenever you want to generate your own uh, Django key uh, or the secret key, cryptographic key for Django, uh, you can do it by uh, note that I'm inside the virtual environment that contains Django. So I'll enter into a Python shell and uh, I'm going to import from uh, Django dot uh, core dot management import uh, utils. So we have these lay uh, these labor uh, this I think it's a class called utils and you can actually check its components using the dir command since you have imported it and then you'll notice that one of the items what i'm interested in is this getting the random uh, key you can get other you know you can look at other uh, items or other uh, classes or methods rather that are inside these utils so we have the get random secret key so I'll just print it out and it will be utils dot I'll use the dot notation and copy this and uh, paste it here and since it is a method I'm going to add those uh, brackets and you see I have uh, gotten a key uh, whenever I do it again I get a different key and uh, the list continues on and on so Whenever you are copying and pasting this key onto the environment uh, environment uh, variable file uh, for Docker, uh, make sure that you do not have, uh, as I can see in this key, we have the hash. So whenever you add a hash, uh, it sort of breaks the that key and it will only pick up this first part. I think this is in relation to the syntax of the Docker uh, environment variable file. Uh, maybe you can refer to the syntax and how the uh, variable uh, values should look like. 
uh, what you should put and what you should not uh, put like the, uh, so we eliminate those hashes in my case i can probably replace the hash with uh, the percent sign or with some number or a letter so this is what you have in the uh, how this is how you can get your secret key so we'll just skip that the other methods i think using the linux uh, the linux uh, shell or the kernel uh, you can be able to also generate some random keys and you can also use the Python secrets library uh, But uh, we won't do the that uh, in this tutorial So let's uh, these are the keys and if you look at also the names of the database and uh, The passwords are also different uh, We have this for the environment uh, Variable for the production environment and for the development environment So another key thing that you notice let me open the uh the development environment uh, yaml file and also let me open the other one for the production you will notice that uh the maybe the only differences that we have in this case we have the uh, production this one pointing to the env file for the development so the other thing worth noting is the ports uh the web service runs on the default port which is uh, mapped. So this is a, a container port, and this is a, our host machines uh, port. And uh, this one runs on port 80, and we are going to see that as well. So I think we can begin with the development environment. And uh, let me confirm that we do not have any containers that are running. So we do not have. So whenever you have a number of uh, configurations for the uh, uh, Docker, so you need to specify which file that we are uh, gonna use here. So whenever I probably type Docker compose, uh, let me just add something. Docker compose uh, up. You'll notice that it states that no configuration file that uh, provided so i need to specify the file and uh, i'll use this using the uh, this dash f and then i'll specify the docker compose that i'm using i'm using the development uh for the development environment so i can now uh, add the other commands which is up and uh, i want it to run in a detached mode So you can see that it is now creating uh, our container. So let's see the differences that we were talking about. So if you look at uh, these on the ports, remember that we are mapping our, uh, we have mapped our website, our development uh, website into the eight port 8000. So whenever I navigate into my browser and I add local host, I add the port 8000, I can see my website. Okay. So let me try and add some funny things here. You'll see that we are seeing this page, and below this page, it says that it's because you have set our debug is equals to true. So this is okay for, the, for our development environment. And if I rerun the previous command that, I, that we used, uh, which was uh, uh, exec so in this case in every command that we are making uh probably not every command but in most of the commands we'll be specifying the configuration file that we are uh, using before incorporating other commands so we have the exec uh, python manage.py uh, check and deploy so we are going to get i have not specified the container name it's, it's web so it's going to show us, uh, it's expected that it's going to show us the errors that it was showing us because we have not configured this. And uh, allow me to take you to the settings.py file, which I've also modified. And uh, we have this environment. Uh, so it 
it will uh, basically what you are telling this uh, these settings of py is to check for the environment variable uh, that specifies the environment so in this case the default uh, is production but if this environment variable exists so in this case remember we are using the development environment so it will in this particular case uh, we are using the development environment which is the first uh, item here so this is what is going to be picked so if it is not found instead of throwing an error uh, we are going to uh, it is it is going to assume these uh, production uh, environment uh, the same goes to these others that we had checked in the in our previous uh, tutorial so the debug by default is uh, false uh, but if it finds the debug to be true here uh, then it and in the case of our development environment it is true so it picks this value as the as the first so if it does not it's not going to throw an error it's going to assume a production environment uh, we did also add some allowed hosts uh, because whenever you switch the debug to false uh, then you need to set the uh, configure the allowed hosts and then we will scroll to the bottom of the file where uh, we added uh, this so if the environment is production environment then it will, we will set up these uh, we will set up these uh, variables okay so that's why in our case we have this issue because our production our environment is uh, the development environment and one way we can also look at that is i've opened the docker desktop uh, let me check the terminal and uh, i've opened a shell inside the a web container so I can just type the dot env and you can see all the we have the environment we should have the environment uh, variable here that specific states that this is the development environment and uh, so th those are the few things that we can check using the uh, development environment so I'm just going to stop uh, the containers uh, using the uh, down and in this case, I'm going to also uh, remove the uh, volume because if I do not, I may encounter, I may experience some errors because uh, the volume. Actually, I think this is something that we can change. Uh, the volume that is specified in the development environment and the uh, production environment are the same. Okay. Uh, but that is uh, that we will do that later so for now we can uh, run the develop uh, the production environment okay we can run this production environment and i'm going to reopen the environment variables for the production environment so now i'm going to change the uh, when i'm running the file to the docker production environment uh, configuration file and i'm going to run it in a detached mode uh, yeah we do not have that dash so it should be up and dash uh, d yeah so we've been able to let's confirm that the containers are up and running so they are up and running. Another thing that you will notice here, our our web uh, container is mapped onto port 80 in our local machine. Uh, it runs on the default port 8000 inside the container, but on our local machine, we have it as port 80. And uh, one thing we'll do here, uh, let's try to, let's just try to run, to open our website and you'll notice something. So you'll notice that it is resolving to HTTPS, okay? This is because of the, uh, first of all, you are running in a production environment and I'll take you back to the settings, uh, .py file. So we have set it to uh, redirect, the QSSL redirect to true. And these are some of the, uh, some of these parameters are the ones that uh, Docker, 
or Django deploy uh, normally checks. So let's uh, first try and uh, run the check deploy command before doing anything. And you'll see that this time round it's not showing us any issues. So let's try again and uh, I'm going to disable the SSL uh, redirect, just commenting it out. And uh, let me try and run it as uh, HTTP. Not sure if it's going to show, but. Okay, let me try. Let me try and see if I. Yeah, I've run it in there in another browser. So you can see now it's running under HTTP because I've disabled the SSL redirect. And uh, if I run this, I rerun the check deploy command, it's going to show us a warning. So it shows us that we have set this, uh, to, we have not set it to true. Okay. Yeah, so let's see what happens when we try to type in some URL that do not exist. You'd realize that we are not seeing the Django error message that you are seeing here. This is because when you set the debug into false, then we, uh, it kind of does not show us the error, uh, the log and the, where the error is coming from because uh, this is preferred for the production environment because it does not expose uh, the details of the server, you know, like the Python version, uh, you know, the file paths and what have you. So, yeah, this uh, this uh, kind of uh, shows us the distinction between handling the uh, the production environment and the local uh, environment. So, in our next tutorial, you are going to see how uh, because we are coming towards the end of uh, uh, this tutorial thread, we are going to see how we can deploy uh, this website in, I believe we can begin uh, with Heroku. And uh, uh, we are going to see how, how we can deploy it uh, into Heroku. So this uh, brings us to the end of this tutorial. Uh, if you like this, uh, if you find this video to be of essence, you can uh, like. You can also share and uh, you can also subscribe to my channel for more content and uh, don't forget to click on the bell icon uh, thank you for watching